Hey, what's up, Husker Nation? My name is Logan Merrick, and this is Husker Central, a channel completely dedicated to Husker fans like myself. And today, we're going to be talking about Dylan Riola, Kyle McCord, what happened there, a little bit of Daniel Kalen, and a little bit more. So, hang tight. All right, so I go off on vacation, and it seems like all everything that I was thought I knew about what was going to happen at the quarterback position all fell apart. And what I mean by fell apart is actually not fell apart like in bad ways, but it fell apart in good ways. And it starts with Dylan Riola. Now, I did a whole video. My last video was all about Julian Fleming and Kyle McCord. Now, what, how do I feel about those two? Well, it's Kyle McCord is gone. He's committed to uh, Syracuse. I still think Kyle McCord would have been a good bridge option, but what we what looks to be happening is going to actually be much, much better for us, Nebraska fans. And we're going to get into Dylan Riola, what I love about him. We're going to look at his film. We're going to break that down all in this video. But at first, I just want to kind of talk about the whole Kyle McCord thing. Now, what happened there to Kyle McCord? Because the way it was kind of initially, Kyle McCord decided to move on from Nebraska. Well, according to Mike Farrell, a national pundit, that actually is not how it went. You read right here, he did a factor fiction. And the very first thing was, Nebraska told Kyle McCord, no thanks. Pharrell's take, fact. And then he goes into why it was actually Nebraska who said, thanks, but no thanks. It looks like, from all facts here, that Matt Rule found out about Dylan Raiola while Kyle McCord was on campus visiting, and they were like, we're going to go with the bigger play here. We're going to go with the long-term play here. We're going to go with Dylan Raiola. What happened with Dylan Raiola at Georgia? Nobody knows. We may know down the road, but as of right now, nobody knows, and it doesn't really matter because right now what all that matters is it looks like Dylan Raiola will now be a Husker, which is insane because Nebraska has never had a five-star quarterback ever, and not only just any five-star, but the top-rated quarterback in the nation, and you're going to see why in just a few minutes. But with Kyle McCord, he's going to Syracuse. It's Kind of strange to me that he went to Syracuse as opposed to just trying to go back to Ohio State and fight for that competition there, but it is what it is. Julian Fleming, on the other hand, it says everybody's leaning towards, everybody says he's leaning towards Penn State and that we have like a 2 or 3% chance of landing him. I think it's better than that. I read an article by Steve Sippel on um, Husker Online where Pop Pop, his grandfather, talked about their time at Nebraska. And how we had the best facility I've ever been to, how they had an incredible time. And Pop Pop even said, even no matter where Julian decides to go, I will be a Nebraska fan. I think that that seems like a really good tell. Now, does Pop Pop have final say? No, Julian does. Julian's a grown man or whatever, but it only makes sense to me. I'm not an expert. I don't, I'm not a pundit. I don't have any insider information. Um, I'm not the guy out there doing eyeball tweets and stuff like that. I don't know anything. I'm just like you, just, just a fan. I just try to look at what I see and read articles and just kind of use logic. But Julian Fleming to Nebraska makes a lot of sense, and here's why. He would be the number one receiver. He would be the only guy. He would be as far as veteran presence. Now, you've got Malachi Coleman, Jalen Lloyd, Great dudes who are going to be studs. I've said that before on this channel and many other videos. You can go back and, and, and see those. But Julian Fleming would be the guy to teach these young guys how to be grown men receivers. And so it only makes sense to me that Julian Fleming would come to Nebraska. We've got a great NIL. He would be the dude, not competing against anybody else. Now, granted, he may be like, I want a chance to win a national championship while well, he was at Ohio State. And decided to leave there. So we have a great fan base, great NIL, and he would be the guy. I, it only makes sense to me, but that's just my take. Now, it comes out that Dylan Riola is back on the table. And I was like, holy moly. But first, I was like, yes, that's exciting. I've been played by him before. We all have. He, I feel like he teases us, then he takes it away. But this time, it's different. I don't know what's going on. don't know what happened. But then I immediately thought about Daniel Kalen. That kid has recruited his butt off, and he's constantly kind of been in Dylan's shadow from the beginning. He was offered by Nebraska first, then Dylan came along, and then it was kind of like, but it's his dream to play at Nebraska. And, man, I have a soft spot in my heart for that type of kid because 
my son wants to play for Nebraska one day. He's nine, and 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 I couldn't imagine being his father. But it's come out. It came out that he was going to go to Michigan State and, and take a and take a uh, an official visit there. And now he's canceled it. He's fully committed, which excites me because I think Daniel Kalen has the chops to be somebody good. Not yet. He's still rough around the edges. But I think being able to compete at a high level against another guy your age brings out the best. I've said it before. Competition brings – it's either going to do one of two things. It's either going to bring out the best in you or you're going to shrivel up. And I think Daniel Kalen is that guy that wants to rise to the occasion. And he has peer recruited his butt off. I mean, from, from tight end to, to tackle – those two positions alone, I feel like, are because of not just because of uh, Matt Rule and, and the coaches, but I think because of, of Daniel Kalen and what he's done. I mean, those two positions right there have been huge with Carter Nelson, with Grant Briddicks, with um, a kid, the kid is his name is escaping me from, from Omaha that was committed to Pitt. Like just those two positions right there alone. And then you've got uh, the two wide receivers uh, with. To the two wide receivers from who he's played high school football with. Like, I don't know, man. I just, I think I was really kind of nervous about the Daniel Kalen thing, but I'm glad to see that he has since come out and said he's committed to Nebraska. He's staying here. He's going to compete. And I'm pumped about that. Now, let's get into Dylan Riola. If you don't know anything about him, you're about to find out. He is, as I've said, five star quarterback, the number one quarterback in the nation for the 2024 class. He is six foot four, 220 pounds. He is a grown man playing high school football. Now, he's always played high school football at a high level. He's moved around to three different high schools over the years, um, which is one of the things people are like, hey, um, this kid is, has been committed to Ohio State. He's been committed to, to Georgia. He's gone to three or four different high schools, blah, 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 blah. And then somebody rightly pointed out on Twitter, and I don't remember who it is, and I apologize. Um, I should have screenshot it so that way I could tell you, but they pointed out Adrian Martinez did the same thing. And yet he was here for four years. So we can't, kids are going to be kids first off. Um, but the other thing is, is like, it, it appears that Georgia was the place and something again happened, but let's, let's go over some numbers here. Cause I wanted to know, I hadn't really researched a whole lot about Dylan Raiola. You just know he's number one player, blah, blah, blah. And I never really looked into him because I didn't think he was really going to truly commit to Nebraska. So here's where we're at. His completion percentage, career completion percentage is 64.2%. His touchdown percentage is 9.9%. Now, if you don't know what that means, it means essentially almost 10% of the time he, his his passes are for a touchdown. That's an that's considered an explosive rate. Now, I granted NFL, high school, two different playing fields, but I just want you to kind of understand those numbers. Um, the highest anyone has ever had in the NFL ever is 7%. And so he's at 9.9%. Incredible. And again, let's, I'm not trying to compare the NFL and high school. Okay. I just want you to kind of get an idea. His interception percentage is 1.2%. Aaron Rodgers has had the best ever in the NFL at 1.4%. Patrick Mahomes and Justin Herbert at 1.7%. So that kind of gives you an idea. He threw for this year 34 touchdowns and one interception. That is incredible. Now, he is a big kid, a grown man playing in high school. Now, again, he played at a very high level, so it's not like he's just running around playing small-town Nebraska football. Now, let's get into the tape. So, thanks to uh, 247 Husker for this video. He put together this and has it out on YouTube. I'll also, I will have the link in the description, but let's get into it here. So what I like about Dylan Raiola is kind of this right here. He makes plays even when, even when things it's kind of Patrick Mahomes esque where things kind of break down. He feels things out. He feels the game out. And he, now I don't necessarily love some of these things that he does. Um, where you'll see in a few minutes where like he's falling down, he's getting sacked and he just kind of throws the ball, which is very Patrick Mahomes esque right, right here. Not a huge fan of that, um, but it works out, right? You don't see that a ton in this tape, but when the plays break down, he is able to kind of sandlot football it, which I love. 
huge arms. So let me get into the things that I like. One, he's big. He is a grown man. Look at look at this ball. In the air, he throws that ball 55 yards. Maneuvers the pocket well. Look, he's strong enough as he's going down, still with just his arm able to put some good mustard behind it. This is a huge pass right here, wide open. So, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm getting – so he's he's big, he's strong, he's got good body control for his size and his age, uh, moves in the pocket really well, as you've already seen. He feels the pocket well as well. Can run if he needs to. We will see that in a little bit in these in these highlights. He can run if he needs to. That's not necessarily his game. But he's not like Kyle McCord. Well, Kyle McCord was kind of a statue a little bit, and I said he could use his legs if he needed to, and it's true, he can. That's not his game. But Dylan Riola can move. That's He is not going to be Adrian Martinez, but, he's, but he can move, and he's hard to bring down. Another thing that he does well, he makes off-platform th uh, throws like just with ease, which is just crazy to me. Um. What I love about Dylan Raiola is he has a huge arm, as you're seeing in these highlights, just a massive arm. His downfield accuracy is what I think, not what I think, it's what I know, what colleges love about him. Georgia, Ohio State, Matt Rule. If you've learned nothing about what Marcus Satterfield and Matt Rule want to do, you've learned that they want to have a downfield pass game that's just huge. We've seen that with Malachi Coleman and Jalen Lloyd, right? Four massive pass plays. And so he has the downfield accuracy in a career uh, percentage of 65%, essentially. So just huge. And I mean, right there, I mean, how do you just spin around and throw a ball 30 yards with just kind of a flick of a wrist? Now, he reminds me so much of Ben Roethlisberger, but he has like these tendencies of, of Patrick Mahomes. Now, I'm not saying he's the next Patrick Mahomes. I'm just telling you who he reminds me of, the way he plays. And this is this right here is a stinking bomb. He just has a touch. Like he, Not only does he have a big arm, but he has touch with that downfield throw. Man, goodness gracious. When things break down, like I said, um, he tends to just make plays a lot like Patrick Mahomes. That's what he reminds me of, like I said, whenever when things break down. He's just kind of reminding me of Patrick Mahomes. He stands tall in the pocket. Great touch, takes care of the ball, hence uh, for a tough for his career. He's only thrown 11 interceptions, five his sophomore year, five his junior year, and then one his senior year. Again, last year in Buford, Georgia, throwing for 34 touchdowns and with just one interception. So he takes care of the ball and, and like I said, can make off-platform throws. Now, if you watch these highlights, I want you to notice something. There you see him running. He juked a dude out of his shorts. He is blitzed on almost every one of these highlight throws. Look at this. He is blitzed completely. Now, his offensive line has done a pretty good job in some of these of picking them up. Other times, they're, they're, they're high school, so they're, it breaks down like crazy. But the thing I love is you see him, when he's blitzed, he doesn't panic. That is a difference maker. When, you don't, when things break down, he's not panicked. He keeps, he stands tall. He looks for his receivers. If they're not there, he does the right thing. He either takes a sack if he needs to, or throws the ball away, or he makes a play with his legs, like right here. Look, and he still, if you watch that play right there, he still kept his eyes downfield. I don't know how in the world you, you, you jump in the air and you can still throw the ball 25 yards. But Dylan Riola is absolutely a difference maker. You're talking about a guy who's going to be a true freshman who can come in and it looks like he's going to immediately compete against Chubba Purdy and probably win that job if, if Chubba is not healthy. I think Chubba will at least compete. But Dylan Riola has the ability to completely change this place into a, I think Daniel Kalen also competing with him and the two of them just battling it out. It's exciting. 
That's just my thoughts. I want to know your thoughts. What do you think? Are you let down by the Kyle McCord news? Um, I'm not because of what's coming. We, we, we get to build a foundation with two guys who are young, true freshmen who are going to come in and compete. You still got Chubba Purdy there who just graduated. Congratulations to Chubba Purdy. Um, other big news, you had Bryce Benhart says he's staying. That's huge for the right tackle position. I'm going to have a video coming out this week about the offensive line since I catch so much flack about the offensive line. And Isaac Gifford also stay. John Bullock, stay. That defense is going to look fantastic. If you liked it this year, it's going to be huge next year. You watch. I think we're going to have some more. We're going to see some more flips. We're going to see some more good stuff happening for the Huskers, so stay tuned for that. But Husker fans, a lot of big, fun stuff coming. And I'm hoping tonight will be the night that we hear the commitment. If not, again, early signing day is Wednesday. We should know something by then. But that being said, hope you have a great rest of your day, evening, whatever. If you would, if you got something out of this video, would you like it? Again, if you want to see the full highlights, I will have the link down in the description of the Dylan Riola stuff. Um, but if you got something out of this video, would you like it? Would you share it with others? Would you consider subscribing if you haven't already? And just thank you so much, guys, for all the support. We'll see you next time. But before I go, go Big Red! We'll see you next time.